This nugget is focused on release and sprint planning, where the major focus in this nugget is going to be on sprint planning. That critical upfront activity that happens with each sprint, where we select and agree to the stories that are going to be completed in that sprint. We will discuss high level what release planning is all about, but our real focus in this nugget is on the sprint plan, where part number one is story selection done with the product owner. And part number two, the plan confirmation where the product owner is optional. But at the end of the sprint planning meeting, we have an absolute list of all the stories that will be completed in the sprint. And we have confidence that all of those stories can be completed in the sprint because we've selected and agreed to the stories based on an understanding of the story points associated with each story. What's a story point? It's the work slash time required to complete a story and a discussion on velocity where velocity is the team's capacity, i.e. how many story points can be completed within the story. So focuses on sprint planning and we'll introduce these concepts of story points and velocity to help us ensure that we have confidence at the end of our plan confirmation, we have the appropriate list of stories that, be, that can be completed within the sprint. So our first discussion is a little more formality or a little more detail on release planning. And I kick this off by saying release planning is optional, but at least Steve highly recommends release planning. What is a release plan? A release plan is a medium term target. Where do we want to be after three to four months worth of sprints? So again, for the purpose of this discussion, we're assuming a sprint is two weeks in length. So after three months or six sprints, or after four months of eight sprints, so after six to eight sprints, what business value do we hope to present for realization? And to me, realization is just a fancy term for the goal is implementation. So after six to eight sprints, our objective is to have completed enough work, completed enough stories that we have a focused group of stories that is implementable. Now, again, we realize that with Sprint, every story, the focus is on the completion of every story. We have something that has value and is potentially implementable. But a story in and of itself is too small to be implementable. So we know we combine stories into Sprints and we expect that we're going to combine Sprints into releases with the goal of implementation. To me, the focus on release planning is it is open-ended. It's a guide and it's meant to change. Just like everything with Scrum, it needs to be flexible and adaptable. So at the beginning of our planning cycle, we say in four months time, I expect to have a release and in four months time, I expect this release will deliver this, this, and this business value statements. As we get into the sprint planning and we realize halfway through our sprint plan that some of the work is a little more comprehensive or complex than anticipated, we may not achieve all of that business value we could then choose to move our release out to maybe five months or recognizing that we want to keep with some degree of predictability. We'll keep with our four month release and we will scale back and we'll remove some of the expected business value functionality in that release. Of all of the principles and realizing that this is an optional, not truly part of core scrum, 
But of all of the principles of Scrum, we have to keep in mind that this release plan is not definitive, but it is a guide that the team needs to keep in focus. It's a guide to the selection of stories. It's a guide to the prioritization of stories. Of stories and it's a guide to keep the team focused. It's that brass ring that's three to four months out that allows our team to maintain focus and the release strategy absolutely has to be based on the product vision. Very optional but Steve says highly recommended put the release plan out there and let the team know what the expectations are. Now when I say put it out there, when we went through the project artifacts there is no significant, there is no, not even significant, there is no direct scrum artifact related to a release plan. So how do we put it out there? Whatever is going to work for your team. Put it on a piece of cardboard and post it in the team workspace. Put it in an email so that the team can keep in their inbox and refer to on a regular basis. But having the release plan defined and out there is valuable to guide the selection of the stories, to guide the prioritization of the stories, and keep the team focused on the end goal. And the main focus of this nugget is the sprint plan. And I know you already appreciate what the sprint plan is. It's selecting these sprint ready stories from the product backlog, taking them off of the product backlog, taking that stick pin out and moving it over and saying this story is assigned to Fred. That's the goal of the sprint plan. However, to accomplish the goal, as we've already discussed, there are two steps. One is the story selection, and one is the confirmation of the plan. So, let's talk first about story selection. How does story selection happen? Our sprint ready stories should be prioritized. So whatever method we have for doing the prioritization of the stories in our sprint ready, typically we have the high priorities at the top and the lower priorities at the bottom. So story selection should be as simple as coming over to our sprint ready stories and selecting the first eight stories off of the product backlog and moving them down and saying these are our selected stories. And it is almost as simple as that. There is one very critical aspect that happens during this story selection. The story selection starts with the product owner picking the top eight and saying these are the stories I want you to work on in the next sprint. So we move them down and the eight show up here. The key step in story selection is we then have a conversation about each story. So story number one, the highest priority story, we read the story. Often the product owner will read the story out loud as part of part one story selection. As a type of business owner, I need to complete a function so that I can deliver value to the business. The product owner reads the story and the team discusses the story. The team says, okay, as I understand that story as you read it, do I understand that story as you read it? What are my questions? What are my clarification? Do I believe the story is complete? 
I have enough details to do the work. And do I believe it's small enough to be manageable, i.e., has the story been properly broken down into a true unit story? So after the conversation and the team agreeing that the story is complete, they have enough details, and the story is small enough to work on, the next conversation is, what is done? Is the what is done completed for the story? Is the what is done clear enough? And does the team agree they can accomplish? And does the product owner agree that if the team accomplishes the definition of what is done, that the product owner will say, tick box, yes, that story is good. So with each conversation, each story, we review the story, and as I said, I believe the best step is for the product owner to physically read the story out loud to the planning team, and then the planning team discusses it and come to agreement that says, yes, we accept story number one into the selected approved stories for the sprint. And then we repeat for story number two, and story number three, and story number four, through all of the stories. Do not skip any stories. Do not make any assumptions. Do a full, clear, and comprehensive review of the story selection. And with each potential story for the sprint reviewed and accepted, we then do a quick sanity check. Is it achievable? Does the team believe that it has the capacity to complete all eight stories in the sprint? Well, story number one is relatively complex. It's going to take three days, or I'm going to introduce this term we'll talk about in just a few minutes, story points. And story number two is pretty straightforward. It's only half a story point. And they go through, again, this quick confirmation of achievability and they say, yes, those eight stories seem to be exactly the right number of stories that, that we can complete in a sprint. Or alternatively, they do the quick determination, says, no, uh, I think the eighth story is too big. We don't have room for the eighth story. We need to take the eighth story and move it back to the sprint ready stories. But you know what? It was a really big one. It was a three story point. So let's pick number nine and number 10, which are one and ones, move them down, have the same conversation, review that it's complete, the details are sufficient to work with, that it's small enough, and we have a clear definition of what is accomplished, and move those two new stories into our selected story. So now we actually have nine. We have high priority one through seven. We've sent eight back for the next sprint, and we've selected nine and 10 into our selected stories. And that completes part one, story selection. So then with hour one of our sprint plan done, because if I can walk you back, sprint planning for a two week sprint should take more, no more than four hours. And I said hour one, it's actually two hours. So we're gonna spend two hours for a two-week sprint during doing story selection, reviewing each and every story, and agreeing to it. We then tell, so we have two hours burnt. We then tell the product owner, we'd love you to stay around. We believe you would add value to the next half of our sprint plan. But if you have to go, you have to go. The team now needs two more hours to do our confirmation of the plan. We've already agreed that it's achievable. We already agreed that we have the capacity in our team to complete these nine stories. We now need to confirm, i.e. we need to do our self-management and plan the work. Just when you thought there was no project planning in Sprint, I'm proving to you there is planning in Sprint. There's two hours of planning 
for every two weeks worth of work. But these two hours of planning are critical. Because now we take the story and we say, story number one. We're going to assign it to Fred to do the design. And then the expectation is Fred will take the design for story number one and pass it off to Mary, who will do the development. And when Mary has done the development of task number one, Mary will pass it off to Sally, who will do the testing. So this is what happens in our, or the second half, the second two hours of our sprint plan is the confirmation of the plan. How are we going to plan the work? So each and every one of the nine stories that we have selected are going to end up into our sprint backlog. And whether you do it breaking it down by resources and whether you do it breaking down by to do and in progress or done, however you are going to visually represent your sprint backlog in your team workspace, the activities in the confirmation of the plan are the same. Each story is going to be assigned to resources. And the key is the resources. It may be assigned to a single resource. Story number two may be very straightforward. And we're going to assign it to Mary to do 100% from analysis through testing because it is a small achievable story and Mary has all of the right skills. But the key is we identify who the resources are per story and we develop our plan for who is going to work on what aspects of the story. And we do the appropriate level of rationalization that says, yes, Fred's workload for the next two weeks is achievable. Yes, Mary's workload for the next two weeks is achievable. Oh, look, Sally's workload is a little light. And although we thought Fred's was achievable, it really wouldn't hurt if we took story number five and moved it from Fred and gave it to Sally. At the end of these second two hours, we would ideally bring back the product owner. We would present the plan. Not that the product owner really has any right to approve or, or, or reject the plan because the sprint plan is 100% the responsibility of the team. But I think it's just common courtesy to present back the sprint plan to the product owner that says here, this is going to give you the confidence that we, the team, understand exactly how we're going to accomplish, complete all of these stories in the sprint. And here is our plan that you can visually watch us complete as you're watching our burn down or our burn up charts. And with that, our sprint plan is done. Well, our sprint plan is almost done. We brought the product owner back. We reviewed the plan. And I believe in our last 10 minutes of our four hours, we should work with the product owner and develop a sprint goal. Now, this is not absolutely a core concept in Scrum, but I believe it is a very important concept that will add focus and add predictability and just drive home the work that's going to be done in the sprint. And the sprint goal co-developed with the product owner and the team I'm suggesting we spend no more than 10 minutes doing it, is going to be printed on a large piece of paper. And it's going to be posted in the workspace. This sprint will deliver the customer maintenance functionality to the business by accomplishing all of the stories required to add, modify, and delete customers in our system or something to that purpose.
needs to be short, needs to be sweet, it needs to fit on one piece of paper, needs to be fitting on one piece of paper with very large font because we're going to print it in, post it in our team workspace. But I believe the sprint goal just adds that next level of focus to the sprint. Yes, we have our sprint backlog and yes, we know all of the work assigned to all of the team members, but is the team members looking at the story and looking at the, the steps required to complete the story, I really think it helps to take the head up once in a while and look around and say, why am I doing this? Oh yeah, this sprint is going to focus on customer maintenance. I'm going to ensure that all of the stories required to add, modify, delete the customer is in the system. So again, Steve's opinion, an important 10 minutes, but not an absolute critical part of being Scrum. So I introduced this term story point a little earlier in the nugget. Now I'd like the time to define what a story point really is. A story point is the size of the effort for each story. One could say a story point is no different than an estimate that the story takes 4.5 hours. And that's true we can always equate a story point with a time-based estimate. That's always possible. In Scrum, we prefer to think in the terms of story points as opposed to time-based estimates, although we recognize them, they are synonymous, simply because a story point is easier to estimate and assign. We read a story. We look at the story and says, you know what? That story is just like the last four stories I worked on and the last four stories were two story points in effort. It's far easier to say that than this story point is going to take 30 minutes to do analysis and 44 minutes to do design and 97 minutes to do development and when we start thinking at that degree of granularity when we start to try to identify detailed estimates for each one of the breakdowns of each one of the traditional development components that we have to do for each story we're getting far too granular and we simply are adding far more precision than we need to do effective scrum planning. So when we say it's easier to estimate and assign, we're looking at the story and says, you know what, that story feels like it's almost the same as the last three stories I worked on. It's two. How's that any different than saying, well, the last three stories I worked on had a total estimate of eight hours? It's not. But the difference is the stories can be very different. The current story could be very design intensive because it's focused on developing a new database table to support a new customer function and it's going to be very development and test light. Unlike the previous story that we're comparing it to was traditional, you know, even distribution of analysis, design, development and testing, fully even distribution following traditional processes. And the other story we're comparing it to was analysis light, design average, development heavy, and testing heavy. So the distribution of effort across our processes could be very different for stories. But when we look at the net yeah, this story feels like it should take about the same amount of work
is that story. Yeah, I understand I'm going to do work a little bit differently across my analysis design development, but it feels the same. So that's why I'm saying a story point is easier to estimate and assign because we're working in this nebulous function called story points. Now making the transition from estimating in hours to making the transition to estimating in story points will take some learning curve for your team. But once the team gets more familiar with a story point, they will very, very quickly gravitate to and will very quickly agree that it's easier to estimate and assign story points. Is there a hard and fast rule that a story point equals eight hours? Absolutely not. A story point is whatever your team wants it to be. Your team will evolve to what is a realistic statement of a story point. And a story point may be less than a day's worth of effort, or a story point may be a day or two's worth of effort. But a story point should never be very, very large because if the story points gets large, our stories are too large, and therefore we're not going to get appropriate scrum management. So, something to consider. It's a very effective way to do effective estimating within a scrum process by assigning this fictitious, and I will agree it's fictitious, measurement called a story point to our stories. If the story is significantly large, but something we still believe we can take on as a single piece of work, i.e. that task number one or story number one that we discussed where we're going to assign work to Fred for analysis and we're going to assign work to Mary for design and we're going to assign work to Sally for, for testing, we can easily break our story points down into tasks and task points. The tasks are what I've already defined. Fred is doing analysis and Fred is going to get two task points to complete analysis. Mary is going to get one task point to do design and Sally is going to get three task points to do testing, for example. Often a degree of granularity not required, but some teams may feel more comfortable taking their overall story points, breaking it down into task points, especially when we get into the degree of granularity where we're assigning tasks within a story to our individual team members. And a task point is the same as a story point. It's an arbitrary measurement of a piece of effort that we will quickly become standardized on, but it's not one hour, it's not four hours, it's whatever your team feels comfortable is the amount of effort required to complete a story point or a task point. And our final discussion in this nugget is this thing called velocity. What is velocity? A standardized statement, now there's a very pompous word, a standardized statement of the team's capacity per sprint, i.e. a count of the number of story points that the team on average completes per sprint. So we have measured our story point activity over the last 15 sprints and averaged over the last 15 sprints, our team can accomplish 14 story points per sprint. So that is our team's velocity. We use that velocity to determine how many stories are going to be accepted into the next print sprint as part of our story selection. So we go through each story and we've demoed this already. We went through the eight stories and we determined that the number of story points for the eighth story exceeded our capacity of 14. It took us to 15. We absolutely refused to accept more stories into our sprint than our velocity is going to allow us to do. So we rejected that last story, which was a three, which obviously takes it down to 12. And we selected stories nine and stories 10, which had one story point of S estimate on them and therefore that allowed us to complete the sprint within our team's velocity which is the number of story points per sprint. So if you have a established functional scrum team 
velocity is absolutely the appropriate method for determining how many story points, i.e. the velocity of your team. If your team is new, if this is your first time working in Sprint, if you've got a bunch of new team members that have joined your team that are not experienced Sprint developers, it's going to take some time to get to an established velocity for your team. So the typical recommendation we have in Scrum is we apply a concept called yesterday's weather, or more appropriately termed, the number of story points in the last sprint. So in the last sprint, we completed 12 story points, so we have no reason to believe that it's not as likely that we will get 12 story points completed in the next sprint. And this is based on the philosophy that if you're trying to predict the weather, you have as much likelihood of success by saying it was sunny yesterday, so it's going to be sunny today, assuming the weather is going to predict itself, as you are going to say we're going to have a torrential rainstorm. While we're building to the point of a standard philosophy, we simply pick the number of story points in the last sprint and assume we can achieve that. In this sprint, we did a little better, so we got 13. So as we're selecting our stories for the next sprint, our assumption will be we can complete 13 story points, and we had some issues, and we only got 11 done. So that becomes our yesterday's weather, our basis for developing selecting our stories for the next sprint and so on until we get to the point that we have confidence in our ability to determine the number of story points per story which is going to take some time and we get to the point that we have some predictability in our performance which leads to the determination of our velocity. In this nugget, we focused on all of the activities associated with giving us our sprint backlog, which is that cork board that identifies all of the work, all of the stories that are going to be completed in this sprint. So all of the stories per the sprint. We accomplished the creation of our sprint backlog through two steps. The first step, number one, was story selection. Working with the product owner, we select the highest priority stories we agree that the stories are ready And by ready, we agree that the definition of the story has enough detail to allow us to do our work. And we agree that the definition of what is done is appropriate, that the story is worked upon. And we validate that we have the capacity. And we validate we have the capacity by assigning story points to each story. And we compare the number of story points for the selected stories against our team's velocity, which is the number of story points we can complete. And then we develop our plan where we assign the work to Fred and Mary and Sally. And we complete the sprint plan with the definition of our sprint backlog. And Steve likes to add in a sprint goal, which is a one pager to define the objectives of the sprint. We kicked off this nugget with a very brief discussion on a release plan, which is our three to four month vision of what we want to accomplish. It should be a guiding force for all sprint planning activities, and it typically results in an implementation. This concludes our nugget on release and sprint planning. I hope this module has been informative for you and thank you very much for viewing.